Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Tony and this week I'm going to be reviewing Man's Search for Meaning. This is an incredible book. It's one of my top five books of all time, which says a lot considering I've read maybe, I don't know, I've read hundreds and hundreds of books. I read an hour every day. So if I'm recommending this, it means that it's truly something special. And this book is written by Viktor Frankl, a man who was imprisoned in a Nazi internment camp and who survived and shares his story. And he explains how and why some people were able to survive, not only survive, but thrive, to be able to become better on a spiritual and emotional level, and why others fell into desolation and despair. And the reason I'm talking about it today is I want to share some of the topics with you in the hope that these topics can improve your life. The first topic I'm going to cover is there's a meaning behind everyone's life. Or I should rather I should say there's a meaning for everyone's life. If you're watching this right now and you're depressed or you feel like there's no purpose in your life, I'm going to give you a method that should hopefully motivate you and invigorate you. And the method is this. Ask yourself this question, what is the work that only I can do? What is the work that only I can do? There is some work out there that only you can do, that nobody else can either, either has the qualifications or they have the drive for it. You're here for a purpose. So if you can answer that question, then it'll really supercharge you and it'll take all that energy that up until now had been going inward destructively and allow you to use it and express it outward constructively. So again, ask yourself, what is the work that only I can do? And I want to make this clear, your meaning for your life might change at different times in your life. When I was in my 20s, I was teaching dating material. When uh, that was in my later 20s, when I was in my early 20s, I wanted to my entire focus was on prosperity. Now I'm in my 30s and I want to contribute and help people become the best that they can possibly be. So your meaning for us for the moment, it might change at different periods in your life, but there is a meaning behind your life. So ask yourself, what is the work that only I can do? And your meaning not, might not necessarily just be about work. It might be you might want to live for a specific person, like you want to see your child grow up and become a powerful person, a, a person of great stature and character and integrity. So th the reason behind your life is up to you. And Viktor Frankl used to say you could find meaning in your work, you could find meaning, meaning in your relationships, and you can also find meaning in your suffering. If you're going through some, tra uh, some tragic experiences right now, use that as an opportunity for growth. Frankl talked about in the book that even in the seeming worst of circumstances that there were prisoners who expressed the best of humanity, that still radiated a smile, that still expressed generosity. I'm thinking right now of plants. We take manure and we throw it on plants and the plants take the, the ingredients, the nutrients from that manure and they use it to grow. So if you're going through some stuff right now, take what seems to be negative and say, ask yourself, how can I use this to grow? and absorb what you can from it and use it to make yourself a better person. Frankl also talks about how in Western civilization, it seems like there's this, there's this emphasis on being happy. And we think that if we're struggling, that we're somehow doing something wrong. But the reality is that character is built through, through suffering, so to speak. Like I'll give you an example. When you go to the gym, you use the resistance from the weights to make yourself stronger. So and in a like fashion, if you're going through something right now, if you're working through something, some difficult time in your life, use that as an impetus for growth. Use it to become stronger. Use it to become a better you. The next item that Frankel covered was, he said the most depressing influence upon prisoners was them not knowing how long they were going to be in the prison for. That degree of uncertainty caused the greatest depression within them. And the reason I, I'm mentioning this is, if you're going through a difficult time, it's not going to last forever. It might seem like it's infinite because in the moment you're in the heart of it, but it's only temporary. Those prisoners that were able to look towards the future and tell themselves this might be 10 years long, 20 years long, however amount of time, but they were able to focus on something greater than themselves, like in 20 years, I'll be able to see my wife again, were able to survive the worst conditions or some of the worst conditions people could possibly pee through. So if you're giving, if you're in a difficult period right now, tell yourself, 
that this might be this might be taking place right now but it's only a temporary part of my life and start to look forward to the good anticipate the good believe in the good believe in yourself and that good will start to manifest another important point that Frankel made was that prisoners needed goals to give them that sense of moving forward that reason to stay alive so even in, in a Nazi internment camp people still needed goals the way the human mind works, we're all growth-seeking organisms. We all want to grow. We all want to become more. So I highly recommend setting goals for yourself. And if I actually have a fun process for you, and it can really change your life. I want you to take a pen and paper and write out 101 goals that you want to accomplish before you die. So you're going to write out 101 goals that you're going to accomplish before you die. And I want you to list for a goal to be an actual goal, not just a wish, you have to write out how much and by when. So you'll say like, I will earn $10 million by September 22nd, 2001. That's an actual goal. By September 22nd, 2001, I'll either have $10 million or I won't. But it'll be clear when that date comes if I've reached my goal. So what you do is you write out these goals, 101 goals. And then for myself, I wrote out my 101 goals and then I would break them down into six month increments. What I plan to accomplish in the next six months. And then from there, I would break that six months into the monthly increments, what I plan to do in the next month. And then from there, break it down into weekly increments and then daily increments. So every day I'm going, um, I'm moving more and more towards my larger goals. And also when you do these 101 goals, you'll come up with things that you might not have thought of or you might not have even consciously thought about experiencing. Such as I recently did stand-up comedy. I recently performed at, uh, at some improv shows. So cool things like this will start to emerge as you get clear on what it is you want. So try it out. Write out your 101 goals. Another important point that I want to make that I got from this book is you can control your thoughts. As a human being, you can think independent of circumstances. And I'm reminded of one part of the book where Frankel, he's out, I think he's out shoveling snow and like, you know, negative who knows how many degree weather and he's wearing like man less clothes than I'm wearing right now and even though he was in these awful awful circumstances he would allow his thoughts to drift and reflect on his wife and the beautiful relationship they had and he said he would be filled with so much love and so much joy so the reason I mention this is you can think independent of circumstances if things aren't the way that you want them to be start to tell yourself that things are going to get better focus on the good that you have in your life at least you have a strong mind or a healthy body at least you know that you're living in a, in a nation where there's tons of opportunities and if you're not in a nation with tons of opportunities you can move to some place where there's greater opportunities but the main point i want to make is you can think independent of your circumstances so you can always rise above any situation circumstance or event in your life that might seem to be impeding you happiness cannot be pursued it must be it must ensue happiness cannot be pursued it must ensue that was one of Frankel's main points in Western civilization we have the sense that we have to feel happy all the time we think that happiness is the cause and then the byproduct will be this amazing life when in reality it's it's reversed happiness is an effect the cause is you going after what it is you want when you go after what you want, that creative impulse within you will be expressed and happiness will come about as a result of that. So don't chase happiness for the sake of happiness. Instead, go after what you want and you, uh, you'll have a sense of fulfillment, your self-esteem will improve and happiness will occur as a result of that. And lastly, I'm going to actually read the quote because I don't want to butcher it. Frankl says, a man who's truly lived will not envy the youth. Instead of a life of possibilities, he'll have lived a life of realities. Now, why is this important? In Western culture, we have, this, uh, we have this youth worship where we worship the young. But in reality, Frankl said it should be the opposite. The youth should envy the older, like those people who have actually gone out and achieved what they wanted to do in life. And if you're watching this, I want to urge you to start going after what you want right now. It's not too late. I don't care how old you are. That dream relationship, that dream career, whatever it is you want is within your grasp. If you're desiring it, it's been placed within you by the divine. So go after it and get it and live the life you've truly imagined. That's my review of the week. Get the book. There's a link down below. I highly recommend this book and I'll be back soon with another great review.